All right, Media Day, we are finally up into 6A districts where Houston's got most of the teams in the Houston area are in 6A because uh, big big schools get big districts. And, and I'm joined by Coach Cedric Hardiman from Conroe. And man, I've just we've gone through this whole preview of districts after realignment. And I think I finally came up to the first district where not a daggone thing's changed. You guys, yeah, that's I, right. <laughs> the familiarity, is that a good thing? Or, or were you kind of looking forward to seeing new teams? Or is it good that you get to see uh, teams that you're used to? Uh, I think it's pros and cons. You know, uh, I've been in part of the district now. This Next, next year will be my seventh year where we transfer, transferred from going from playing against the client schools to now the district that we're currently in. Um, it's a competitive district. You know, so I think on one hand, you know, you're excited about you know having some familiarity with the guys that, you know, you played against, you know, already for the last two years. But then at the same time, I mean, it's like everything else. The district is very competitive. Uh, it's a lot of great coaches, a lot of great programs in our district. So, um, you know, once you're excited about it being familiar, but another thing, you know, that, you know, you're in for a dogfight again this year. Yeah, you, you kind of look at every every season te- teams graduate great players. They move on. Uh but you look at this year, a lot of the superstars that were there last year, you know, mm-hmm. May- Mabry Matoyer and, and even even Juan L. Farrakhan, they've moved on. The big defensive studs at Oak Ridge, they've moved on. Obviously, D.J. Lagway, he's moved on. You look mm-hmm. up and down, and all of a sudden you look at Conroe, and, and, and th- arguably three of the top five players are sitting there on your roster in this district. How excited are you to get in? Because you were a playoff team last year. But you but- really had to, you had to dogfight it at the end to get in there. Now you got a team that's that's experienced, and you got some real young, st- well, experienced studs out there. Talk to me about how excited you are to get back into this thing. Um, we're excited, uh, you know. But one of the things that I think, if you look at the history of the district and the schools that we play, um, yeah, they have the stars that have been there, but they reload. You know, I mean, you've gone through. You talk about Lagway. You know, Willis. You know, Trent Miller's had an experience even before he got to Willis at at you know spring of, you know, reloading and, and having explosive guys. They still have, you know, Bishop over there, yeah. who's one of the most dynamic players, I feel like, in the nation, um, and 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 some, you know, other key players that are returning, you know. And so uh, you talked about Oak Ridge, the defensive guys are leaving there, but you have a head coach in Schmidt who is at, you know, Woodlands, who, you know, every year, you know, they churn out new guys, new guys, and it's about the system, the program that they have, and he does a good job. Uh, and then the Woodlands are the Woodlands, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the Matoria is gone, but I mean, the system that they have, and, and if you watch the cell varsity, I mean, they have some talented kids that are coming up as well. So, um, you know, we're blessed. You know, we have some kids that can play, um, you know, excited about them getting the recognition that I feel like that they deserve. Um, you know, having a returning quarterback for us is, is key. Um, this will be the first time in my sixth year, going on my seventh year, where we've had a kid that played at that position and now is returning. We've played seniors every year. So, that's going to be huge for us. Um, and, and they've just been working in the off season. Um, so, you know, we're excited. Um, I think, the, you know, the program, the community is excited. Um, but, you know, every year we talk or every day we talk to them about none of that really matters. You know, it's good that you're getting the recognition. Um, it's good that you, you know, people are, are seeing how talented you are. But if you don't put the work in and execute, like none of that matters. So we're just trying to keep the main thing, the main thing and keep focusing in and you know, uh, you know, hopefully it'll pay off at the end, but um, it's always better when you have talented players. I will say that. Well, speaking about talented players, let's, let's go ahead and talk about one of them, the guys getting most of the flowers in on, on your squad uh, on the defensive side, Dorian Brew. Uh, and also you got Jaden Ramos on the back, back into that, or on the defensive line there. Talk about those guys and, and how they kind of, are, are they going to step in? I'm, I'm assuming Dorian's kind of had took a leadership role as a, as a junior, but are these guys ready to step in as leadership and say, Hey, y'all, y'all follow me. And because, you know, another thing I wanted to discuss, it was kind of up and down. You had a heck of a non-district. You started right. off slow in the district and then you came on strong when you had to, to get in the postseason. Is right. it kind of, kind of a deal where they say, Hey, let's not, you know, you ride my back. We're not going to go through these tough times, but let's, let's get busy right off the bat in district play. Yeah, you know, talk about Dorian, exceptional kid, um, five star. I think he's the best defensive back in the nation. Um, physical, explosive, uh, probably the most versatile de- defensive back in the nation. Physical, can cover, and he has a huge high ceiling. I mean, you're talking about a kid that really didn't start playing defensive back until his sophomore year in high school. 
you know, so you're going on two years, you know, season and a half or whatever in, in regards to playing it. So, um, and then Jaden Ramos, same thing, huge high ceiling, 6'4", played basketball this year, played about 240, dropped down to about 220 during basketball, he's getting that weight back. Um, but the thing that you kind of touched on is what makes both of these kids, uh, you know, exceptional is their leadership. You know, they're part of the leadership council that we had this offseason um, during phase two. Uh, you talk about some of the struggles that we had last year. Um, you know, I took ownership on that. <clears throat> I was very intentional, you know, this year during phase two to make sure that, you know, we do a, a good job of not just establishing our leadership, but then teaching them how to be leaders. Uh, we had a lot of great kids last year, a lot of kids that led by example. But, you know, I felt like I could have been a better, you know, as a head coach of getting those kids prepared for those times. Um, and so that's one of the things that I put on myself. And so those kids have been part of it, uh, done the things that we've asked, um, not just, like I said, vocally in front of the groups, but then led by example. So, yeah, we're excited about both of them. That's kind of cool. You guys, Everybody's learned. Everybody's kind of building from experience, yeah. even coaches all the way down for, yeah. for this year, which could be a, a sweet year. Now, now you flip it to the offensive side. You mentioned the quarterback returning, but you also got a big-time running back. Talk about uh, Jermeco Green and, and what he can bring to the table as a running back. Uh, Jermeco Green is the best running back in the state, hands down. You know, um, explosive, uh, versatile. You know, he's one of those kids, you know, growing up, you kind of see the kids, you know, back in the day where everybody wanted to play running back and from Little League and you see that kid run the ball and he just has natural ability. He's one of those kids. Um, great balance, uh, you know, ex physical um you know can catch out the backfield we move him around a lot we put a lot on his plate uh can pass pro very well um and so we're excited about him um you know he's one of those kids that had an opportunity to get some experience you know really since the sophomore year and he's one of the other kids that we put along with Nunley uh and six other kids in that leadership council to try to you know help develop that aspect of his game but um you know we're, we're excited about him you know and he allows us to do a, a lot of different things Perfect. Perfect. All right, coach. Well, I know we talk about this early, you know, we're three months away from playing ball, but yep. we, we can do that in Texas. Though. I can talk about this stuff, you know, whenever and people will eat it up. So I appreciate you joining with this coach and, no, and good luck yeah. in this upcoming season. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sick and Tigers. <laughs>